This program is brought to you by Emory University. So the conversation of music and literature in the technological age, there are a lot of issues around this topic that uh, all of us have sort of felt uh, technology is sort of changing the way we interact uh, with every part of our life, but particularly in, in the arts. I don't know. I don't ever find that audiences are having a hard time catching up. Uh, the things that we've always said they couldn't catch up to have never caught on. So um, <laughs> I, I, I think rather we're, we're interacting differently through these mediums, but I think audiences are totally with it. And I think our experience is different. I mean, I went to Tron, and I had to wear spectacles to witness that spectacle, the 3D movie. That was, that was a different experience for me. It was a... And I don't think, I don't think it's a question of, of catching up to it, but rather how uh, we're catching on to it. I mean, I think we're in a, in a process that's ongoing of, of constant change. That's Heraclitus, right? Mm -hmm. we, we never step in the same river twice. I, I've stepped in many things twice, but not, <laughs> not the same river. Right. And, and just the idea that there is this constant change, I, I think, is very real. But I don't think it's a matter of our catching up to it. So, so take me over to the novel. I mean, if I pull up your novel here, which I can do, uh, I can sort of read the novel and then uh, start to scan through it. And as I'm looking through it, I can see a word, tap on that word, do a, a quick Google search find any information about that. I, my experience is no longer a linear path through a storytelling, because how can you control what people are reading, what they're doing, sort of, I mean, there, there's no control of that anymore. Are, are you aware of that when you're writing? You yeah, know, but now? you don't want to control the way people read, you know? I mean, it's, it's not the writer's job to control how people read, that's, that's the reader's job, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it would be a, a rash writer who tried to tell the reader how to read. Are you thinking um, in a faster time frame, or? No, I mean, I just wanted to, and, Robert said so much that was so provocative. I, I, you know, one of the things that strikes me that I've always liked about the business of, of putting words on a page is that it's incredibly low technology. <laughs> uh, I mean, you need a piece of paper, a pencil, and a room, and even the room is not essential. <laughs> But, but I, uh, that, that is so, uh, uh, so many of the things you're pointing to have to do with the no of mm -hmm. creativity. Right. And so much of this idea of technology creating the yes of mm -hmm. creativity is very interesting. But in fact, creativity often isn't about what's possible. It's about what's impossible possible. And, and, and how you create the limits of the creative fact, or the form, the thing, the object or the event that one creates is often about all the things one left out. Debussy's great line when he was asked how he composed was, well, I take all the notes and I leave out the ones I don't like. <laughs> well, that's what I want to ask. You bring up the, point, the idea that the small publishers, that they had a little bit more freedom than we have today because the scale has gotten so large. Well, Steve Jobs it basically is in the publishing business now. Steve Jobs uh, is in the business of destroying publishing. Okay. <laughs> 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 I mean, as, so, he, as he previously destroyed the music industry. So I... The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.